got no problems, but I don't, I don't just don't preach much in Indiana. But I'm, I'm glad to be here for one night anyway. I got my ticket paid for, so I'm not worried about nothing. But uh, I'm a little awkward and amazed with all these sweet ladies here at our men's conference. I had a bunch of stuff I wanted to tell you. Man, I'm trying to figure out how I can get this. My, 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 my. Uh, Brother Mooney, always good to see the bishop. Very nice to have uh, you as a friend in my life. You've been a great blessing to me personally and also to our Florida district, the numerous camps and conferences you've preached at. He's a master, master communicator. You have preachers and you have orators. You have scholars and theologians. And uh, Brother Mooney is just a, a gifted man that is able to communicate. He's able to paint a canvas and put you in each stroke and you find yourself there. And I've just always been mesmerized by his ministry. And I like the way he sings. I do. I like when he gets that, does that kind of jive stuff that he does. I like it. Well, they've asked me to preach and they've asked me uh, if I could be myself and I'm the best Jeff Arnold I know. And I have a lot of fun being me. Now, I, I can't hardly see you because of these lights. Now, if you can get them lights off me uh, without ruining your technology, fine. If not, I'll just, I'll act like everybody's in love with me. But I kind of like to make eye contact and I can't see anybody. And, uh... I don't know what we can do about it. Move the lights up higher, get it off my face, or put them on the floor. Put them on Brother Mooney. Let's have a video. Bro now we're talking. All right. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, I'd like to direct your attention to the word of the Lord. Uh, in the Gospel of John, chapter 4. Um, come here with very, very mixed emotions. I got more sermon notes than you got time. But I feel a need to talk to the men of the Pentecostal movement. And uh, I've been doing this at different men's conferences for a number of years. And I just, it's, it's time for us men to tell our ladies to be quiet. Now, now I'm not trying to be rude. I'm just saying... Uh, it's, it's time for you men to find out what you're supposed to be doing. Yeah. I'm going to talk. Don't worry. I ain't afraid of nobody. You got your Bibles? Come on. I want to read John chapter 4. Beginning, please, with verse 19. When you got it, say, we got it. And the woman saith unto him, the him is Jesus, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and you say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when she shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship, you know not what. Now that's a neat way how to win friends and influence people. You know, when you're God Almighty, you can say anything you want to say. I mean, can you imagine just talking to a woman, trying to get her saved, and you say, you know, you're kind of ignorant. You're active, but you're ignorant. You're sweaty, but you're unsaved. You're jumping and jiving and juking. You don't know beans about what you're doing. You're locked in a tradition, and you couldn't find truth if it was looking at you in the face. And that's paraphrase what he just said. Let me read it again. It said, you worship, I'll give you credit for it, you just don't know what you worship. Now watch this, Jesus, we know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. Please notice what he just said. He sent us an unbelievable revelatory mystery. Ain't nobody been talking about salvation. 
They've been talking about drinks of water and buckets. And now he's talking about worship, and he says, oh, by the way, for salvation is of the Jews. Who was talking about salvation? Unless God is trying to tell us worship has something to do with salvation. For salvation is of the Jews. What does he mean? Because only the Jews believe in one true living God. To the Jews was given the oracle and the revelation of one true living God. So it's the one gift that the Jew had was that God gave them the knowledge and the understanding that the heathen and the pagan didn't have, that there was only one true living God. Anything less than that, anything other than that, is counterfeit Christianity. Now, I'm not trying to hurt your feelings. I don't know who's visiting, but I am in the book. Salvation is of the Jews. What does that mean? The one God people birthed the one God in a body. And they hung the one God in a body on a tree. But they couldn't keep him dead because God just won't stay still long. I wouldn't fear no devil that couldn't keep a dead man dead. Hey! I'm almost there. You worship, you know not what. We know what we worship. Salvation is of the Jews. Here's the verse. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers. Now, if the master said true, he's indicating there's a false. When the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Here's the kicker. For the Father seeketh such to worship Him. Now, I don't want to hurt your theology, but this next verse is, is really not translated correctly. It says God is a spirit. That's not correct. There's not an indefinite article in the Greek language for this translation of which the letter A is. So while you can read it that way, and I understand it, but it's really correctly to say God is spirit. He's not a spirit. That's an indefinite article. It's not there. You know why? Because if, oh, I feel like preaching. If, if, if he is a spirit, he's one of the many. If he is spirit, the many are of him. Because the Bible calls him the father of spirits. God is spirit, and they that worship him must worship him, spirit and in truth. I want you to notice this verse. For the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. It's men's conference. I owe you the best I know what to tell you. Here's what I want to tell you. You could be what God's looking for. Well, Lord, bless the ministry of the Word and help me to preach real good. Help me not to be long-winded, but to be unctionized and effective. Bless these sweet people. They've sacrificed time and money to be here. Help me to be a blessing to these folks. In Jesus' name I pray. And everybody said amen. Before you're seated, turn to someone to the left or the right, however it works out. Look them in the kisser and say this. Hey, bud, you plan on worshiping? If not, please move. You can be seated. Maybe it's never got in your little Pentecostal apostolic brain what God's looking for. Mainly because the church has got to get sidetracked and we look for workers. I'm not going, I ain't going to preach no more until I get something on the first thing I said. Maybe you don't know how this works. See, I know that we're not in a church setting, but, but we're going to create an atmosphere for a church, and, 
And this is not a college lecture where somebody with a lot of degrees more than a thermometer talks to brain dead people and they just gawk at them and look and they just get a, they get a, a degree later on. No, see, in church, if I tell something true, you're supposed to respond. Yeah, yeah, hey, yeah, yeah. We are the offspring of a speaking God. Then you need to open your mouth and praise God. You need to open your mouth and magnify God. You need to use the gift of life and say something. You can't think of praise. You got to praise the praise. You can't think of prayer. You got to pray a prayer. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my heart. I will say of the Lord. Before you're seated, look again and say, I said, do you plan on worshiping God? Because if not, would you please move? Because I'm fixing to go crazy. I'm, I'm fixing to give God what he wants. He don't want your money. He wants worship. He doesn't want your talent. He wants worship. He doesn't want your gifts. He wants what? Oh, what's going to happen in Indiana this weekend when we leave this men's conference with an understanding that we're going to be what God's looking for? You, 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 you can be seated just a minute. Hold on. You got to get this now because... Bible said, with all I getting, get understanding. We need to get understanding. We need to understand what this is all about. First place, God is not somehow divorced parent that gets visitation rights only on the weekend. He's called on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. He's altogether lovely. He's worthy of my praise. He's worthy of my worship. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, I can't sit there with my legs crossed and my lips locked and my hands folded. i got to give the man what he wants. I'm going to go crazy, elder. Listen to me. If you give God what he wants, he'll give you what you need. You, 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 you can be seated just a second. Somebody needs to stop the parade and tell us what this is all about. I don't want to hurt your feelings and all you great, wonderful men of God and you theologians and scholars. But so help me, goodness, man, somebody needs to take a pulpit in Pentecost and say, hey, this is about giving God what he wants. Wait, no, I'm going to try it again. This ain't about being Pentecostal. This ain't about being apostolic. This is about being what God wants. The Bible said the potentate is on the prowl. The king is on the prowl. He's looking for something. He's looking for somebody, not who's perfect. There ain't nobody perfect. Not who's altogether lovely. There ain't nobody like that. He's looking for imperfect people who are willing to worship God in spirit and in truth. Can I take a few minutes here, Elder? You got to hear me. This is, this is burning on me. You see, if you learn to be a worshiper, God could go out of his way not to fix it, and you won't backslide. Oh, we got a generation of praisers, but praise and worship ain't the same. You praise God for what he does. You worship God for who he is. Oh, yeah, Psalms 150 and verse 2. Praise him according to his mighty acts. 
Praise him according to his excellent greatness. That means you bless him and exalt him when he doesn't do what you want him to do because he's always holy. He's always powerful. He's always wise. He's ever present. He can fix it if he wants to. Oh, my. Oh, my. Look at somebody. I can't hardly see you. Just look at somebody and say, you know what? I'm fixing to become what God's looking for. You better give me some room. I'm fixing to act up. Oh, Brother Young hit it right on the head tonight. If you can't shout at your clothes, you pay too much for them. If you can't get sweaty and stinky, you pay too much for them. If you don't want to bless God, God's got somebody sleeping under a bridge tonight that'll out preach me, out sing you, and out worship anybody. Please be seated. See, we've turned this thing into Christian entertainment. We come to church and say, okay, preacher, move me. Who in the name of God are you that anybody's got to move you? And we can sit on our duff with our legs crossed and our hands folded and our lips locked, waiting for the choir to move us or the preacher to move us or for God to touch us? I don't think so. God is looking for somebody who will worship him in spirit and in truth. I, I, I'm, I'm telling this truth. I'm telling the truth. Just, just bear with me just a minute. Now we, we are the offspring, according to Acts 17, of a speaking God. God is so powerful, you can't even measure what all-powerful is because there's nothing we can relate it to in our world that's all-powerful. But God is all-powerful, yet as powerful as he is, he didn't make anything with his lips locked. Ten times it says in Genesis 1, and God said, and God said, and God said, why? Life and death is in the power of the tongue. And God said, God releases energy through his mouth. We release energy through our mouths. Oh, I wish I had a witness in the house. God is so powerful, he can't even walk through a cemetery without having a resurrection. God is so exact that he could call Lazarus out of the grave who is dead four days. I know that's always been a great miracle, but let me give you the real miracle. The real miracle is that he got the right Lazarus. There were thousands of Lazaruses that were dead in the grave, but the God of glory is so powerful, he can walk into dead things and say, not you, not you, not you, I want you. You didn't come here because you joined the church. God grabbed a hold of you, and God put his hand on you. Hey. Before you're seated, one more time. Hey, bud, I said, do you plan on worshiping? Because the king is looking for a worshiper, and I don't want you to be in the way when he finds me. Now, maybe you can sit there and just play church, 
but I got to praise him. I got to worship him. When I think of where he brought me from and where he's taken me to, I, I got to praise him. You, you, you can sit down just a second. I'll get to my sermon after a while. Now, now God's a speaking God. He's a speaking God. Oh, yeah. It's funny how he's up in this last generation, he's giving birth to people who are deaf, dumb, and blind. Well, I'm just, Brother Arnold, I'm just not emotional. You're going to lie about a lot of other stuff, too. Now, I don't know where the ladies are in the house, so just close your ears, ladies. You man, you macho cats, that you ain't emotional. You romance them women, don't you? Is that emotion? You can get seriously ticked off about something. Isn't anger an emotion? You can get upset about something. Isn't that an emotion? Then why don't you get emotional about God? Oh. You, you, you can sit down. So I'm not trying to wake everybody up at one time. You, you, you cats that are looking good. You're looking fine. You look like you jumped out of CQ magazine. God just tiptoe around you and say, I'm looking for somebody who's got a drug problem. I'm looking for somebody who's got a sexual fantasy that's out of control. I'm looking for somebody who watches stuff they shouldn't watch and wishes they didn't watch it. I'm looking for somebody who worship God. You know what it means? It means that you can worship God even when stuff in your life is not right. You don't have to be perfect to worship God. You've got to have a desire to worship God. I want to be a better person. I want to be a cleaner person. Man, I feel the Holy Ghost. Shut up. Sit, 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 sit down just a second here. Now, for all you cats that don't get excited, you go sit on your big duff Sunday while your preacher preaches with his tongue polishing his shoes because you're just a thinker and you're a theologian and you're a deep. Let me tell you, cat, some of you cats are so deep you're stuck in the mud. I'm going to say something for you, Bishop, in your district. New converts ought not be the best worshipers in our churches. Those of us who've been through hell and high water, we ought to out-worship any new convert for what God has done for us. Oh. I've been through the water and I've been through the fire but the Lord has brought us into a wealthy place. Sit down one more second. I'll try to get to my sermon here in a second. Those of you who never get excited, never even have the decency to lift your hand, how dare you breathe God's air God woke you up this morning and started you on your way. If God held your breath for a few moments, you couldn't catch it on a fast train. I could have had an aneurysm this morning. I could have woke up with some death disease. But God, who is rich in mercy, spared my life. I got to praise him. Please be seated. I, I, I'm, I can't barely see, but I've been watching some of you cats still like this.
And I know you're not emotional, and it's not all in the shout. Well, sure enough, ain't in the stare either. I don't mean to be rude to your district, but I'm going to tell you what the Bible said. It said the dead praise not the Lord. I'm saying, men, it's time for us to take the shout away from our ladies. It's time to have dancing men, praying men, talking in tongues men, shouting men. Where are the Davids? Hey! I said, where are the Davids? Where are the men who are after God's heart? You, 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 you can be seated just a minute. Let me, let me go as quick as I can. I need a bottle of water. Listen to me. Just listen to me. Those of us that pride ourselves... Uh, no exercise and no gymnastics for Jesus, and no sweat, no spit, no emotion, all study. Ha. If they called you and told you you won the Florida lottery, which by this week is $69 million, I promise you, if they called you stoic saints, I promise you, you could be sitting in your undershorts in your pajamas. And when they told you you won $69 million with all your deepness and your stoic stuff, you'd go, whoa, hey, look out, hey, $69 million. Oh, son, you'd jump, you'd run out your underwear in the street, you'd act crazy. If they called you my radio program and said you just want a free trip, round trip ticket to Honolulu, you'd jump up and down. Gentlemen. We have won something greater than a trip to Honolulu. We're going to the New Jerusalem. Our name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. We're fixing to leave this conference with a new understanding. I'm going home and I'm going to worship while my preacher preaches. I'm going to worship during the song service. I'm going to worship at the altar service. I'm going to make it easy for the platform. Can I preach a few minutes here? Sit down just a second, please. <laughs> well, I'm just not emotional. Well, you're also kind of ignorant. Last time I read, they only had 30 minutes of silence of heaven. That might have been for you. To think that God would bring you out of damnation and darkness. God would change your destiny. God would forgive every vile and wicked thing you and I have ever done. God would wash us in the blood of the land and baptize us with the Holy Ghost. God, who loves us with an undying love, with an unconditional love. You mean to tell me you can't raise your hand? You can't wave your hand? You can't shout a little? Please be seated just a moment. Let me just take a five or six minute sidetrack here to explain what worship is. Now, worship is not emotion. But it becomes emotional at times. Listen to me. Worship is an attitude, a state of mind, a sustained act. Listen to me. Worship is an expression of adoration towards deity. The only reason why some of you cats don't worship, you're unimpressed with God. Yeah, yeah, 
Some of us think that Jesus is like STP. You just add him to your crankcase so your motor can run a little better. You don't need your motor to run a little better. You need Jesus to do an overhaul, pull everything out, put new stuff back in. If any man be a Christian, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Now, I can't see if the ladies are in the auditorium. But, but if you are, please don't get insulted. But we're fixing to take it away from you. Now, you're laughing. You preachers that have a heart attack, if your men jumped up and took it away. I'm going to just be real ugly because I probably won't be back and I got my ticket. I wouldn't keep anybody on my church board that wasn't a worshiper. I don't care how smart they are, how business they are, how successful they are. If they don't worship, they don't go to the prayer room. You need them like you need hemorrhoids. I wouldn't let people run my sound system or my cameras and videos that didn't worship God. In fact, we got the Bible school presidente here. I'm going to save you four years in Bible school. You won't have to go. I'm going to tell you what Christianity is. Here's what it is. It's total God possession. See, we haven't made up our mind yet whether we want another spirit and another person to possess our minds, our emotions, our wallets, our bodies, our drives, our dreams, our agendas. Please, please, please just sit back a minute. To worship is to feel within one's spirit and heart and then release those emotions that were created by the feeling. To worship is to assign to God His truth and worth. It's an exchange between two lovers. When we have praise and song service and worship and some of us men sit there yawning and pulling up our socks, it tells all of hell and heaven we're bored. Yeah. Worship is, is beyond that. Worship is an act of giving. Listen to me carefully. Because every time you decide to make it up in your spirit that you're going to worship God in spirit and truth, like Mary worshiped by breaking the alabaster jaw and filled the house with fragrance on the heels of a pure act of worship, there'll always be a Judas saying, Hey, what's this waste? I made up my mind in the Pentecostal rank. I don't care if the hair lips everybody from the top dog to the bottom dog. I'm not going to be held hostage by somebody's opinion or somebody's look. Because you ain't fighting the devils I'm fighting, and you ain't paying the bills I'm paying, and you're not bleeding like I'm bleeding. I may never become a great preacher. I may never become a great singer. But it's put within my grasp that I can be the one thing God's looking for. If I want to, Bishop, I can be a great worshiper. Boy, I'm, I'm on. I don't know where the ladies are, so ladies, just smile and look straight ahead. Men. Look right at me and don't blow your cover. But no man is thrilled and excited about going home to a cold, frigid woman. Ain't no man want to bust his tail all day long, work eight or ten hours dealing with a bunch of wackos and dirty spirits and crazy folks, and then come home to a woman who's more interested in the lawn the carpet, or the dishes. That's why the bars are full. That's why the hunky-tonks are doing a great business. You're not hearing me.
I mean, no man wants to come home to a woman who doesn't want to be romantic or affectionate or at least once in a while intimate. I travel for a living. I promise you, I just landed and got off a plane from Singapore. I was there nine days preaching a crusade. When I got home, I didn't shake Patty's hands. Well, I'm going to just say it. And it doesn't mean you have to always rape your wife. It doesn't mean you always have to have sexual intercourse. You can just be intimate. You can talk. You can hug. You can exchange feelings. Well, now let me make my point. And God is not in a hurry to run towards a bunch of so-called Christians who are indifferent towards him and not thrilled about him and not excited about him. Brother Young, even God said, I sought for a man. Sit down, man. I'm going to talk. I'm going to find you somewhere. I don't know what you believe. I know you're a bunch of basketball cats and sports fiends in Indiana. That's your bag. If you're saved with it, great. I'm happy for you. But I'm going to tell you something. It seriously ticks me off that some of you cats could go crazy over an NBA game or an NFL game and you get to church and you're like a coffin. I think we need a renewing of priorities. I think when our preachers preach to us the name of Jesus, we ought to be on our feet. There ought to be tears running down our face. We ought to be thrilled. Where are the Jesus fans? Please be seated. I'm not trying to be rude. I'm trying to be effective. Let me try it again. To worship is to feel in the heart an overwhelming glow. So overwhelming that you're forced to express it. Now watch me. For you don't have to shout, just shout to worship. You can worship with tears. You can worship with a bowed head and a heart that's hungry. You can worship with words, applause, body movements. You can leap, you can bow, you can prostrate. You can worship in silence. Our lives should be an act of worship. Listen to me. Worship always flows from wonder. And if you're a lousy worshiper, it's because to you, God has no awe or wonder about him. That's why marriages are in trouble. Because they lose the glow between the hubby and the wife. They're no longer excited with each other's presence. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm married to Patty almost 34 years in a couple of months. She looks good. She smells good. She sure enough kisses good. And she does all the rest real good. Now listen to me. When I was a young cat, as most guys young get married, they think everything was just sexual relations, panting like a dog in heat. But after you're married long enough, you start to admire and adore things about that person that far transcend just a moment of sexual activity. You're not hearing me. I can sit in the room with my wife. I, I get a kick out of these young cats, 22, 23 years old. All knowledge dies with them. And they sit there and they talk to their wife like, hey. And I just, I can do more with this, with Patty, than that loud mouth jerk can do with his empty head and his heavy words. I can just look at Patty and go, 
and I just preached. I can just look and go. Because, see, we've gone from just petting and fondling and intimacy to knowing each other. Where she can sit in a chair and I can sit over here and she can read a magazine and I can read a paper or I can read something or read my Bible and I can enjoy my wife's presence because I've come to love her so and appreciate her so. I don't know about some of you holy rollers in Indiana, but I ain't got over being saved yet. I'm not over being filled with the Holy Ghost yet. I'm not over being water baptized in Jesus' name yet. I'm not over angels watching out for me. The Word of God giving me promises. I want to be what God's looking for. Can I preach a little longer, Elder? Please be seated just a minute. You see, God desires our worship and He deserves it. But He doesn't need it. Listen to me. God doesn't need anything. He doesn't need money. He doesn't need air. He doesn't need food. If you have a God that needs something, don't mess with Him. God doesn't need anything. He's self-sufficient. But He desires and deserves the worship of its creatures. And we are the only creatures that worship. Ants don't worship. Bats don't worship. Porpoises don't worship. Human beings worship. Bear, 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 bear with me just a minute. You see, we were created to worship. When the elder tonight used that beautiful scripture 2 and 7 of Genesis and God breathed the breath of life into him, he became a living nephesh or a living soul. Adam woke up and looked at his dad and said, good morning, dad. And God looked at his boy and said, hello, son. And they had a love relationship. You know what happened in sin? It wasn't just that man fell and lost his walk with God. That's not what the issue is. Listen to me. When man fell into trespass and sin through rebellion, God lost his only earth worshiper. And man lost his seven, his heaven anointed authority. Because authority and power comes out of real worship. The Bible says, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. The Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water, and God said. It's so important that verse 3 is acted upon before verse 4. Watch. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. Why? Because you can't have a fresh word from God till you have a fresh move of God. We got people coming to churches that want the preacher to give me a word, but God said, give me some worship. Give me some worship. If you'll give me some worship, I'll give you a word. If you'll give me some worship, I'll give you a word. God's got the answer for your situation. God knows how to fix AIDS. God knows how to take care of cancer. God knows how to fix divorce. He's looking for worship. You're not hearing me. Chronicles 16 and 9 says, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout all the earth, beholding the good and the evil. Watch. To show himself strong on behalf of them whose hearts is perfect towards him. What is that scripture saying? The potentate's on the prowl. He's not looking for sin. He's looking for worshipers. You know what John 9 says? We know that God heareth not sinners. Then how does a sinner ever pray? But if any man be a worshiper of God, him God heareth. Can 
I preach just about 10 more minutes? That'd be okay. Now, I'm, 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 I'm going to just share something with you that God gave me. He gave it to me. I'm not smart enough to find it. He just gave it to me. In Luke 19, well, I'll just turn over and read it. Jesus has gone to Zacchaeus' house. This old hypocrite that couldn't tell the truth standing on the Bible looking at Jesus. He's a dishonest bum. He's stealing and cheating. Yet Jesus goes to his house. Apparently it doesn't bother God who he goes home with as long as they're trying to be better. Now, 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 watch this. Jesus turns around and says, after he says, I'll restore fourfold, I'll give back everything I stole four times, and I'll give to the poor, blah, 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 blah. Jesus says, this day of salvation come to this man's house, seeing he's also a son of Abraham. Here's the key. For the Son of Man has come to seek and save that which is lost. It does not say the way we preach it. Here's the way we preach it. For the Son of Man has come to seek and save them that are lost. He didn't come to seek and save them that were lost. He came to seek and save that which was lost. What is the that? Worship. move of God in your church begin to magnify God and worship God and exalt God and bless God I promise you the gifts of the spirit will operate the voice of the Holy Ghost will talk signs and wonders and miracles will be more frequent please be seated I'm trying to hurry here we, 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 we're beating our preachers to death we're making them hit home runs every time they get in the pulpit. While we sit there with our lips locked and our legs folded. Come on, preacher. Knock it out. I, I measured last week. It was 425 feet. See if you can hit the top deck, 516. We'll wait on you. The preacher's just wrenching his guts till his tonsils are hanging out. And then you're sitting there and you might give him a Friend, I'm going to tell you something. You need to move your hands and lift your voice just out of self-defense because buzzards only land on stuff that doesn't move. I don't want no devil messing with me. I don't want a devil coming where I am saying we can do business with him because he's not excited about Jesus. I want to be excited about this. I want to be thrilled about this. This is the greatest thing that's ever happened to me. Oh, la, 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 la. Let me just hurry along here. You see, what we don't understand is the whole issue is worship. Now, worship indicates a worshiper, but the issue is worship. I'll prove it to you. Lucifer was the anointed cherub that covered Isaiah 14, Ezekiel 28. He was covered with every precious jewel. Am I correct? The problem is jewels don't give off light. They have to reflect light. So old Lou didn't have no light of his own. He was the choir director. He was in charge of heaven's praise and worship. The problem was he started worshiping his own press reports. See, the issue isn't just worship. It's who or what do you worship? You better make sure whatever you're worshiping can get you out of sin and can get you out of the grave and can keep you out of hell. Am I making sense yet? Now watch. You got to get this. This is powerful. Here's Lucifer in front of the throne. God is light. In him is no darkness, no variables, no shadow of turning. He's absolute perfect light. Lucifer has all these jewels on him. When he began to lead the choir and magnify this invisible God who clothed himself with a cloud, who wraps himself with light itself, when he began to exalt and magnify this God, God would literally radiate from himself. 
and would hit his jewels. And that light would flash through the universe like a kaleidoscope of technicolor glory. But he got so intoxicated with his own praise that he decided to worship his own opinion. And you know what God did? The Bible said he cast him out of heaven at the speed of light, lightning, 186,000 miles per second because God won't let anything close to him that won't worship him. If you want to know why God seems far away, maybe you've got another agenda. Oh, I'm, I'm fixing to have a fit right now. I'm, I'm fixing to have a fit. I'm going to try to find all you cats that ain't moved yet. You ready for this? You know why the devil fights worship in the church? He's an ex-employee who got fired for non-performance, and we got his job. I said he got fired for non-performance, and I got his job. I'm about ready to have a fit. I can't hardly take it. You, 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 you'll be seated. I'm trying to close. I'm not near done. I'm not even near started. Folks, I'm going to tell you something. I got no place to go but heaven or hell. If I'm going to hell, I don't want to go early. If I'm going to heaven, it don't matter how late I get there. Some of you cats got to start going to church with leaving on your mind. Now, 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 I don't, I don't mean to be ignorant, but let me get over here in cheap seats. Hey, folks, is there anybody besides Jeffrey Wayne Arnold that's ever been fired from a job? For those of you that are educated, let go. Dismissed, replaced. If I run off this platform, pick me up, because I'm, I'm fixing to go ballistic here. You know why hell fights you worshiping? It's one thing to be fired. It's another thing to be replaced by an inferior. He was the highest of the angelic order. We're made out of dust. That's next to nothing. And God turned around and said, I'll take next to nothing and I'll let it replace you. If you don't want to worship me, I'll get them to worship me. one translation says Simon Simon Satan has asked for thee for an opponent he wants to take you out before you step into your destiny he wants to stop you before you become a Holy Ghost filled worshiper because you will kill his kingdom few more minutes and I'll close. <laughs> you, you, don't, you don't think this issue is worship? Jesus is on a 40-day fast. He's in the wilderness. He ain't got the Mormon tabernacle choir. He ain't got Paul Mooney preaching for him. He ain't got Calvary singing for him. He ain't got Pedago singing for him. He's out there by himself. 40 days, 40 nights. Devil shows up. Turn these stones into bread. Don't tempt the Lord. No, you know, live by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Takes him up on the pinnacle of the temple. Throw yourself down. He misquotes Psalms 91. 
You gotta, you gotta have a little pity on the dirt bag. He has to misquote stuff. He's had his brain crushed. Oh yeah, he bit Jesus' heel. Jesus stomped his brains in. You're not fighting a full-orbed devil. He's been injured beyond repair. You've got authority over him. You've got power over him. You've got to worship in spirit and in truth. Sit, sit, sit down, sit, sit down, sit down, sit down. I'm, I'm trying to close here. Watch. Third temptation, elder. Third temptation. Do you guys ever worship up here? You just stare. I didn't say you didn't. I just asked. I love, okay. If they don't worship, you boo them. Now watch. The third temptation. Satan turns on the video equipment. In a panoramic something. He showed Jesus all the kingdoms of the world, their glory, their splendor, and their majesty. Watch what he does to Jesus. He says, all right, I didn't get you on the stone trick. I didn't get you on that Superman thing off the palace. Let's stop playing games, Jesus. I know who you are. You know who I am. I'm your former employee, and you're my former employer. He says, watch, all these kingdoms with their splendor and their glory will I give thee. Here it is. If thou wilt fall down and worship me, Satan is after your worship. God is after your worship. Who are you going to worship? Satan will give you money. Satan will give you victory. Satan will give you success. Satan will bless your business if you'll prostitute your worship and give it to him. I'm not done. I'm going to preach some more. Don't you see what's happening in our world? The church world is trading true worship of Jesus Christ for things, for stuff, for materialism, for the things the devil can. Can I say something right now? Bishop, don't let this district get frustrated by a bunch of bimbos who walk in error, who are vile, impure, lacking integrity, because they have big numbers, and they have big crowds, and they got lots of money in buildings. The God of this world is giving them stuff for their worship. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to close. <laughs> just, just bear with me just a minute. This, this, Bishop, this has been mind-boggling to me for 20 years. Jesus meets this woman who is shacking up with a guy. Now, I know that's not an educated collegiate term, but I think we understand. She comes to the well. Boy, if I had a time, could I preach? There's a well sitting on your well. <laughs> Boy, if I had time, could I preach a message about the God who waited for me to show up? And the woman comes up and he says, lady, give me a drink. Now, you got to understand this about God. When he asks you for something, he's planning on giving you something. <laughs> give me the drink because he's fixing to give this chick a well. He's asking for a sip. He's going to give her a well. Depends on how you handle the interrogation. And then they start the culture thing. Well, you're a Jew and I'm a Samaritan. You got nothing to do with that. And he says, oh, get off the religious kick. Let's get back on square one here, baby. You're thirsty. That's why you're in these six affairs. So they talk back and forth and they make small talk. And then finally she says, give me this water that I thirst not. Need to have to come here. So as soon as you ask for what he's got, 
He's going to demand integrity and transparency and honesty. Go call your husband. I ain't got no husband. That's the truth. You've had five, and the guy you're living with now ain't your old man. You call that right. Now watch how spiritual this lady becomes. She's shacking up while she's defending her religion. I perceive you're a prophet. Nice move, Gertrude. I perceive you're a prophet. You know what she was doing? She was Louisiana crawfishing, man. Time to get away from you. Oh, Bishop Mooney, if I had time, could I preach on what happens when you meet the seventh man? She had six, but number seven showed up at the well. And he's got what she needs. And he's got what we need. He can satisfy your thirst. I'm, o I'm almost done. I'm almost done. I perceive you're a prophet. You know, our fathers worship in this mountain. You Jews say worship over there. He said, lady, let's get off the baloney here. Let's get back to what it is. The issue is worshiping in spirit and in truth. You don't know what you worship. Now watch what he just said to this woman who is shacking up. He said, oh, by the way, oh, shack up, Willie, you are a worshiper. See, you can be in seduction. You can be in pornography. You can be in lust. You can be in greed. You can be in self-aggrandizement and still be a worshiper. Because some people worship sex. Some people worship drugs. Some people worship sports. Some people worship success. Some people worship applause and accolade. Everything worships. Heathens worship. Pagans worship. Everybody worships. But who do you worship? And what do you worship is the issue. I'm asking you men in your Indiana churches, you got great churches in this district, but I'm asking a favor of you this Sunday. Change your seat. You know why most people sit in the same seat? It's a comfort zone. Nothing happens there. I ain't going to sit next to that crazy loony. Every time we start singing, he jumps up and dances on my blue suede shoes, knocks my wig off. I ain't going to mess with him. I'm going to sit over here in the comfort zone in the frigid air section where nothing ever happens. Oh, I wish we could bust a move here tonight. I wish we decide to say, come on, Lord, you're looking for a worshiper? I'll worship you. I know I got pimples and warts. I know I got failures and mistakes, but I'll worship you. trying to close right now for the third or fourth time you gotta hear me hear me hear me whatever you want to do don't be dumb enough to go to your local church Sunday and sit by a non-worshipper I'm, I'm giving this district license tonight you go to your church walk up to some bimbo in your church be as polite as you can be and just say, oh, pardon me, sir. Pardon me, ma'am. In the next 30 or 40 minutes, do you plan on worshiping? Now, I don't know about you, but I preach in a lot of black churches. I love them. You know what they do? They just put their finger up and they move. They got to go to the potty, they put their finger up. They gotta, they're very polite to the ministry. They just put their finger up. You know what? If we could do that, we'd have fingers going up all over the place. 
I'm going to sit over here where nothing happens. Not me, buddy. You know why? Because I'm fighting devils. I'm fighting my own stupidity, my own flesh. I'm trying to be more Christ-like. I have bad days, good days. I have bad weeks, bad months. I don't need to sit next to some bimbo telling me about the NFL. I don't give a flip about the basketball game. I need somebody who create an atmosphere so that maybe they can... They can help me break through so I can get a touch from God because God's not looking for perfection. God's looking for worshipers. If God can find a worshiper, I promise you, he'll tear up everything that's holding you hostage. He did it to Egypt. Let my people go. If you don't let my worshipers go, I'll kill everything in the place. The only way Jonah got out of the whale's belly was he filled the whale's belly with praise and worship. And what was holding him had to let him go. Jesus. Dumbest thing the devil could have ever done in Acts 16 was put two worshipers in the same cell. can shake up some stuff that's holding you hostage. God can tear some gates or some things that the devil told you had never changed. That devil is a liar. It can change. God is the master of change, but he's looking for a worshiper. Huh. I'm going to try one more time. Five minutes and I'm done. 